Legends, welcome back to a Ruck Infringement Podcast interview, a special for your off-season this year. Uh, look, we've got a fantastic guest with us today. Uh, I'm a big fan, a bit nervous to talk to a player who has played for my club and for two other clubs in the Raiders and the Titans. It's the one and only Dave Shillington. Dave, how are you, mate? Good day, Joe. Good thanks, mate. Thanks for having me. No, mate, it is an absolute pleasure. Now, I did just mention it, but let's for those that live under a rock, let, uh, tell the tell the listeners who you played for and a bit about you. Uh, I was very fortunate enough to play in the NRL for a long time. Um, in saying that, I would have liked to play a little bit longer, but um, did play for a long time. Started for Sydney Roosters, a wonderful club to play for. Uh, it wasn't easy cracking that team, to be honest, because um, yeah. I had two knee reconstructions before I even got to debut. And the, um, the Roosters were on fire in those early 2000s, winning premierships, making grand finals. So I had to bide my time, but I finally debuted there in 05. Uh, played for about four years and then went down to the um, the Green Machine, Canberra Raiders, and played there for seven years, actually, which is surprising because I thought, it's Canberra. Um, I'll just go for a few years and then maybe go overseas and do something like that. But, um, but loved it there. So, yeah, seven-year stint. Uh, and then came home to Queensland, which is a bit of a dream come true, to be honest, in a way. Yeah. I, I was missing home, missing Brisbane. Uh, so came to the Gold Coast, played for the Titans. Uh, I was a bit of a letdown for Titans fans, if I'm honest. <laughs> um, I was supposed to play there for two seasons and be a bit of a leader of the pack, etc. They were looking for me to step up. But um, unfortunately, injuries just got the better of me and I retired a year early. So, um, yeah, not, not long career, but I uh, would have liked it to have been a little bit longer if I could be a bit greedy. It's uh, it's a shame that uh, age catches up to us, mate. Uh, we're, we've all been there. But let's jump into our next question. Who was or who was the funniest teammate you played with? It can be across any club or any rep game. Uh, probably um, Sam Thiday in the Maroons camps. Oh, yes. Uh, Australian camps too. I was lucky enough to play with him. He's a great player, but um, quite a character too, uh, as most people know. He... Um, he get he gets away with being very cheeky, you might say. So whether it's um Mel Meninga for the Maroons or um, or Tim Sheens, who was coaching us for the Australian side, um, he uh, Sam is pretty quick, quick witted, and uh, quick with a comeback and a quick call, and um, and he, even if it was a little bit inappropriate, maybe or not very timely, you might say, uh, which it was on the occasion, uh, Sam could get away with it for sure. And this next one we have, it often can line up with the funniest teammate, but it was who was the strangest teammate you played with? Strangest? Uh, uh, probably my Canberra Raiders teammate, Dane Tills. Oh, uh, uh, yes, I have heard some yes. stories. Yeah, he is a strange character. And funny enough, I ran into him a couple of weekends ago. I was um, I was down the Gold Coast having a beer with some friends and, um, and he was up from Newcastle on the Gold Coast and... Uh, I guess yeah, he didn't bother to tell me he was going to Goldie because I live in Brisbane, so we didn't yeah. plan to meet up. But we just bumped into each other, and it was like, um, you know, just reminiscing on old times. The both of us come together and had a beer and a laugh. Um, but he, he's a very strange character. He, he looks strange. He's bald, two meters tall, and um, has a lot of weird sayings. I might say. So. Oh, I love that. Uh, did you have any pregame rituals or superstitions when you played? Sometimes I would just. I'd stick to different things in yep. being a bit superstitious, sort of something would get inside my head and I'd go, well, I did this last time or I better not do this t- this time just in case. Uh, I did try and stick to routine a fair bit. Um, I'll tell you something a little bit strange because I was a, a, I was a big player, like heavy, but like cause when I was playing, I was one of the biggest, heaviest ones. There's a fair few bigger ones now, but um, back then I was. And, uh, but I was always a bit worried about being too heavy and not like agile enough to be able to move side to side. And so, um, I'd always like eat lots of prunes the night before the game so that, um, I could sort of like clear out any excess weight, um, by game day. And I always used to weigh in like two or three kilos lighter, I reckon, than I did earlier in the week, um, on game day. (laughs) Mate, they'd be asking you some questions. What's going on here? But no, I love that. That's a great one. Uh, now, I did some research, which the listeners will find uh, shocking, but I did some research. <laughs> you played 215 games across three clubs. Now, was there a favourite game that you played in? Uh, I reckon I do have a favourite. 
And funny enough, we actually lost the game, but it was a favorite in that um, it just felt like a real rugby league game. And uh, I, I played for the Maroons on the Wednesday night and then backed up for um, the Raiders on the Sunday. And we played uh, the Tigers um, at Leichhardt, Sunday Arvo. Uh, it was actually a beautiful, beautiful um, sort of winter Sydney, Sunday Arvo, the, the, the blue sky. Um, Leichhardt was packed to the rafters. You couldn't see a spare seat or blade of grass on the hill. So um, those little suburban grounds, when they're packed, they're really going off. Oh, yeah. You know, it was a really tight game, all game. I was really, um, I guess, nervous or apprehensive about playing because my legs were so gassed from Wednesday night still. I was like, oh, man, am I, am I going to be able to get through this? Am I going to be a liability out there? I was second-guessing myself. But um, what I found was because of that intensity I was used to from the Wednesday night, um, it's much more intense than an NRL game. So I came out of the blocks just firing and played at a level above other people um, in that particular game and really surprised myself. Uh, and, yeah, played the house down, thankfully. They gave me the um, the three and the three, two, one in a losing team, which is pretty rare. Uh, so um, we, we lost, and I obviously prefer for us to have won and me not play it as well. But um, yeah. just like the atmosphere, at like part on a Sunday Arvo, the tightness of the game, and then just surprising myself to be able to step up, um, being so exhausted from the game on Wednesday night, it kind of made it a special moment. Yeah, no, mate, I love it. Uh, I didn't have this question that I sent to you, but I just wanted to say about that, how you were talking about backing up from origin. Is it easier to back up or is it easier to have the rest? People have said things like, it's better to play the Friday night after a yeah. Wednesday and you're not as sore or something like that. Um, I didn't necessarily agree with that. I did do a variety of those backup sort of length of periods. But, um, yeah, I think the more days were the merrier for me, for sure. Yeah. Um, I never I never considered standing down or resting. Uh, but, yeah, it, it, these, like, there's so much sports science involved too. So you kind of just do, like, everything you can for recovery. So prioritising sleep is number one, for sure. Like, there's nothing better than that. You can take all the supplements in the world, do all the ice baths in the world, but yeah. sleep trumps it all easily. But then just watching what you eat as well, making sure it's good food, plenty of food too, because you're trying to restore all those glycogen levels. Um, and then doing those other little things like the ice bath and the stretching and the massage and so on. Um, but then in saying all that, you're still not going to feel that great. So it comes down to mindset. So you just got to pin your ears back, don't even care how you feel and just empty the tank, whatever's left in there. Yeah, no, I love it, mate. What was your favourite origin game that you played in? Uh, you know, um, I used to get criticised sometimes at the Raiders because I was playing all, all my Maroons games then and I only played eight, so I shouldn't say all my games, but like I played my games when I was at the Raiders and uh, I was in a winning Maroons team all the time and sometimes in a losing Raiders team. And so it was kind of easier in a way to play good for the Maroons, even though it's a much higher standard of game. Yeah. You just have these superstars around you that you just worry about yourself and nothing else, really. Whereas the Raiders, um, you don't have the same caliber of players, so you have to worry about a lot of things and defensive lines aren't as tight. The support isn't always there. The service isn't always as good. And nothing against the Raiders. It's just the difference between origin and club level. And so, sometimes I'd lose. I'd win for the Maroons. And I'd lose for the Raiders for the same week and fans would heckle me and go, Shillington, why don't you play for the Raiders like you do for the Maroons? <laughs> and um, tell me to have a go for the Raiders. But I just didn't understand that difference. Uh, but, yeah, 2010, the Maroons, we won that series 3-0. Uh, so a complete whitewash, which is pretty rare. Um And I think all of those games were probably equally as special. But the third one... Um, Darren Lockyer spoke to us before that game and said, oh, look, a whitewash is so rare, boys. Don't lose lose this moment or leave this moment here to waste. Yeah. And um, and we stepped up and, and won that third game to get a get a whitewash. No, oh, I love it. Well, I mean, I don't love it. As a New South Welshman, uh, you know, we... Uh... <laughs> We, we we hated those uh those times, but you know yeah, yeah. it was it was a great team and you can't you can't fault it. But mate, you played for Australia as well. What was your favorite international game that you played in? Uh 
Yeah, I actually love playing international games. And some people say, oh, you know, Origin's probably more prestigious or more exciting. But um, well, it's probably it's pretty split between the two. Although um, I certainly just think playing for Australia probably is the pinnacle. Um, oh, for sure. But yeah, atmosphere, it, it's sometimes probably Origin's more intense, but more, and it is prestigious to play for the Maroons, but still Australia's Australia. So uh, Absolutely. yeah. Anyway, um, long story, very long is uh, we played we played at Wembley over there in London, uh, double header, and uh, Australia played England, and I actually got to play against my old teammate Adrian Morley. Ah, was a yes. bit of a um, bit of a hero of mine, really, and uh, he sort of taught me what I knew in my early days there at the Roosters, and then uh, obviously went to the Raiders and then made my Australia debut. He'd moved over to England by then, to England. And uh, he was representing England uh, when we played him. And so I kind of came up against my old mentor, my old hero. So um, at, at Wembley too. And and everyone knows the English people love their sport. Oh, yeah. If someone just made like a half break, you know, like a legs tackle, not yeah. even a full break, the whole crowd would be like, yeah, and jeering. <laughs> and um, yeah, they just really got into it. So it was a special game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, mate, who was your idol coming through? Yeah, probably someone like Adrian Morley when I was yep. playing because, you know, he sort of came onto this scene for the NRL around 02, that grand final era, era for the um, Roosters. And he was pretty fearless, aggressive, like the enforcer. I wanted to emulate him as much as I could. Uh, but also because, like, off the field, he was just an all-around top bloke. Everybody loves Big Mozza because uh, he's a good guy. So he was just this, like incredible example of being able to run on the field flick a switch be incredibly aggressive and dominating but then come back off the field flick the switch back again and be a just good all-around fella so um yeah that was definitely a um a goal of mine i guess or something i like the idea of and i yeah. really looked up to him as such yeah very nice now i don't know the answer to this next one but did you have a footy nickname uh Obviously, most people just call me Shilo. Yeah. But, um, you know, we're actually talking the other night with Big Dane Tills. He liked to call me Pillow sometimes, Shilo the Pillow. <laughs> and um, he got it because um, when I was at the Roosters, the Roosters bought a few Bulldogs players at the time. Like yeah. that was 07, 08, around there. They bought like Big Mace, um, Milesy, and yeah. Ogre, yeah. Uh, Marco Mealy. And Mark O'Mealy thought he's hilarious going, oh, pillow. <laughs> like that. And, um, and I told Big Tilsy about it one day and he's latched onto it and um, it would pull it out every now and then. So it's mostly Shilo, but every now and then they're, they're trying to you know, tease me a bit. They call me pillow. Pillow is a good one, mate. We haven't had that one yet, so I like it. Uh, <laughs> if you could change one rule in the NRL, what would it be? Uh Uh, you know, a bit of a funny one. I'd actually get rid of the third man in, in okay. um, the tackles. So I, I thought about this a couple of years ago because it would really bring back like textbook classical tackling yep. because it would be more emphasis on the first player cutting them down. And if there's only a second player in, then it gives you more chance of offloading, breaking free, um, things like that. But I just think that third man in the tackle, I don't think it's rugby league. I think yeah. it just turns into wrestling uh, as a sport. And I actually hated the years when um, Melbourne uh, really ramped up all that wrestling and set the tone for the rest of the NRL. Uh, Melbourne were a wonderful side, don't get me wrong, fantastic yeah. in many, many ways. But I don't think that sort of spin they put on the game or the change they put in the game with just grinding out teams with the wrestle I just don't think that was good for the game. It wasn't enjoyable as a player. You kind of stand there getting wrapped up and fall yeah. down and so on. Um, and it was boring to watch as a, as a sport, I thought. And since they've done like the six to go and really tidied up that ruck, the game's got a million times better from what oh, yeah. the sort of storm did to it. So um, I don't think there's any arguments, too many arguments that the, the wrestler was a blight on the game and how it looks now is a million times better. Yeah, 100%. Uh, the next question we had was, uh, 
what is your take on the way the game is being officiated these days? We know the game's a lot faster now, but what's your take on how they're going to the bunker and, you know, all that sort of stuff? Well, first of all, I'll acknowledge it's very frustrating. Very oh, frustrating. Yeah. Um, but I'll balance that with everyone's just got to be patient. they got to be patient <laughs> because, look, there is, in circling back to what I said about the wrestle, over the years, team, coaches, players, teams in general are constantly trying to find out how they can manipulate things, get away with it to get advantage whether yeah. it's a sneaky hand on the ball and they get a strip, which is pretty rare to get away with these days, but was frequent back in the day to like putting out elbows and knees in the side of your, of your head, pushing your head so you turn the tackle, um, holding the attacking player who play, is playing the ball, holding their hands to the ground so they can't get back up and play it. Like just um, all, all things, mostly Melbourne Storm made them up. Uh, <laughs> Um, but all those types of things, you know, I, I joke about, about that at the moment is because um, my son, who's nine, he's you know, getting into reading regularly yeah, and uh, he loves his footy. So he's just finished the Billy Slater book and now he's reading oh. the Kevin Smith book and um, and I read it with him at night time. And um, Smithy's actually talking in the moment where we're up to in the book about how the storm get blamed for all these things that they shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just having a cheeky dig at him here. Oh, I love it. I've read that book. It is a good read, uh, Billy's, Billy's book. I haven't read uh, Smithy's yet, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think just be patient with the refs because they are dealing with so much sneaky oh. stuff out there. And as yeah. you referenced already, the game's getting faster. Yeah. There's new rule changes um, semi-regularly that they have to adjust to. Um, it does baffle you when it goes upstairs and they get it wrong. Or well, they take so long to get it right. It does yes. baffle you. Um, I've never looked into who's running that show, but um, <laughs> I think there's there's room for improvement. Um, although, and that's probably the only part I'd be happy to criticise. Uh, but the on-field refs, uh, I'd be really reluctant to criticise. And, man, oh, they've yeah. got the toughest job in Australia. Pri sure. Their prime minister's got nothing on those jobs. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Look, as a fan, it certainly is frustrating, but... I would not want to be a referee. You're exactly right. Now, mate, you've been coached by some wonderful coaches over the years. Who was your favourite? Uh, look, I'm going to give a few people a shout out here, not to Beautiful. be too confusing. But, uh, yeah, look, in, in the lower grades, even starting at the Roosters in the 20s, we won the premiership at the Roosters there and 02 when first grade won the premiership. Dean Pay was my coach, wonderful coach. He he, he brought out some good toughness in me. Yeah. Um, Dave Fern at the at the Raiders, uh, he was a wonderful supporter of mine and I was of his and uh, really enjoyed playing with him. Uh, Brad Fittler at the Roosters, he taught me to really be dominant, competitive and know my role as a prop. Um, Mel Meninga is a Maroons coach. Um, wow. It wasn't so much things he did for me personally, but as part of that team, he just instilled real good values, intent, belief in us all. So I was, a, I was thankful to be a part of that. And one last shout out, I'd probably say to um to I'll have to say two more, sorry. Uh is um I'm naming every single coach, uh, except for my under sevens coach. Uh but um Tim Sheens for Australia. I found him to be a real good straight shooter. Yep. Uh he not everyone loved him sometimes because um look, he had to make some big changes in that team, welcoming new players, but I've always found him very fair. Yeah. Uh there's there's a moment in 09. We were playing the Four Nations final and I'd started that tour as an emu, so like a travelling reserve, but um, uh, then I got onto the bench and then he started me. But then for the last game, he actually kept me hanging until 10 seconds basically before the, the kickoff of the grand final before he told me if I was going to play or not. He said he was choosing out of me and Sammy Thide and he wasn't sure who to pick. He's going to see what the pitch was like and everything. So Sammy and I went out to um, warm up like we were playing. And I warmed up like I've never warmed up before, trying to impress Sheenzy so he knew I was ready. And then we got back into the sheds and uh, about to run out for the game. And he goes, sorry, Dave, I'm not going to play you. And I was oh. like, oh. but he goes, I'll make it up to you next year. And next year he picked me 
Um, I was playing good footy next year. He didn't do me necessarily anything wrong or anything, but he, he picked me and started me and um, and I didn't let him down. So, yeah, I found him to be a real good straight shooter like that. Um, so I'll give one more shout-out to Ricky Stewart. Um, I didn't always love all his styles and tactics and everything, uh, but can't deny that, um, yeah, he gave him a crack in first grade uh, at the Roosters. And then I had him at the Raiders as well. Probably played my best footy in, in a couple of years at my last year of the Raiders, 2015. That was under him. So, um, yeah, um, I, I basically gave a shout out to every coach, but just want to talk about him. <laughs> some uh, some great coaches there, mate. Of course, Freddie Fittler, club legend. But uh, the one I really want to talk about just Sam, you, you mentioned Mal Meninga. I think just the influence that Mal would have had would have been bigger than anything. Absolutely. Mal, Mal like the Maroons team – Camp the Maroons camp do do it so well. Yeah, and obviously I don't know what the Blues do, um, but in the Maroons camp there's like this support staff, assistant coaches, just true legends that get Origin. They live it and breathe it, and they're all about all about helping the players feel their best, be bonded together, so they can get out yeah. the Wednesday night and perform their best. Uh, that's what they're all about. The sole focus. Uh, Mel like. He doesn't necessarily draw up the game plan as much. I don't think everyone knows that. He has some very smart footy minds around him. Yeah. But um, by no means that does that discount his contribution. He, he For me, he was everything in those Maroons camps to drive those wins. Oh, yeah. Because you can have a lot of good players in a team. It doesn't mean you're going to win, right? The old star right. team versus star players in that scenario. But he just instilled his, this belief that we could do it. Um the intent, like that we should do it, right? And when he spoke, everyone just listened. They wouldn't oh. bat an eyelid, wouldn't look away. Um, so, yeah, for me, he was a, he was one of the greatest motivators I think the Maroons have seen. So, Yeah, I mean, it, and it paid off too. So uh, the, the last question I have before we finish up, I know it's a bit early to call, but what team, looking at it for next year, for 2024, what team do you think has the most upside? Um, who's going to play the best? Yeah. Yep. I reckon um, I'm going to make an early call that um, the Rabbitohs are going to win the Premiership next year. Oh. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if those bloody Panthers do it again. But <laughs> um, I think uh, losing Crichton will be a big loss for them, for sure. Yeah. Um, and one or two others. That's, what's his name? Spencer. Spencer Lenny. Lenny, yep. Um, so they're losing a couple of players. Uh not the end of the world for them. They could do it again. But the Rabbitohs, on the other hand, like as, as long as um, as long as the coach has got it right, the team is sensational, right? And so when I say the coach has got it right, he's got to obviously manage Walker and Latrell Mitchell um, to get them feeling and playing their best, right? When they're on, the team's on. Like you see Walker in game three for Origin, he tore Queensland apart. God, I hope they don't pick him next year. You know? <laughs> he had him on a string and, um, yeah, he was incredible. So that's his capability. Um, then Luttrell, like when he wants to, he's oh. shrugging people off, barging through lines and so on. But we've got to have him, well, Rabbitohs have got to have him wanting to. Yeah. Um, but then, then like add Jack Wyden into the centres, who I've always thought he's a centre. Um, he started in the centre at the Raiders when I was there. They moved him to fullback. I didn't think he was a fullback. They moved to 5'8". He was a pretty good 5'8", but I still yeah. think his best place is centre. Um, then they got um, back, what's his name? Keone. Um, oh, Keon Cole Matungi. Yes, that one. Yeah. Um, he's the one they just re-signed. Yeah. Uh, they got Arrow, Murray. Yeah, a couple Murray. of those props go good. They got Cook. Yeah. Um, who's that other centre? Campbell. Um, Campbell Graham. Campbell yeah. Graham. The, the couple of wingers, like the whole bloody team. Um, the halfback goes good. So, yeah, um, I just think that forward pack is sensational. Um, the back line, I don't think you can name a better back line in the NRL. Oh, yeah. When, the, when be they're hard. at their best. Yeah, when they're at the best, um, that's the best back line in the NRL. And a very, very good forward pack. So, really, fingers crossed for the Rabbitohs fans. The coach can bring them all together and have them plan as one team passionate for the um, for the Rabbitohs jersey. I think they'll be pretty hard to stop. For, uh, for Rabbitohs fans, we hope so. But for us, uh, not so much. The arch enemy here. I'm a 
uh, die-hard die Roosters man. But, yeah. look, you know, the, the Chooks, we got uh, Dom Young coming over, Spencer Lenu mm-hmm. as well. So, hopefully, hopefully there's some upside there. But I, I actually have a really bold one. I think the Dogs are going to go all right in 2024. Uh, few big signings. I just – if Serrano can get his key men – uh, focused and ready to go, they can go a long way into the top eight. So, yeah, eyes on the dogs, eyes on the bunnies, eyes on the panthers. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah it's. Uh, I think the, the dolphins will be a top eight side next year. Yeah, yeah. So they they've got the few recruits that they needed this year. They yeah. had no depth this year, of course. Um, but Flegler, Farnworth, and Avarillo, um like that's that's huge gains, and you know actually we should really give the Warriors a shout out too. Oh, like, yeah, for sure. They uh, if if Sean Johnson's got another big year in him, like obviously Webster could coach. So we've asked the Shet coming back as well. Yes, that's a massive one. So, yeah. um, like they they were almost doing like a Parramatta style run two thousand nine run to the finals. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, that, they'll they'll be up there somewhere surely, surely. <laughs> Who knows? Look, we got mm. six months to contemplate. Let's get it back. We we need rugby league back on the screens. Of course, the internationals yeah. are on at the moment. But yeah, mate, that's all we got time for today. Thank you for your time and thank you for answering your questions and having a bit of fun along the way. Uh don't forget this episode will drop either tomorrow or Thursday. I'll do a bit of editing, fix it up. It'll be up on the Rucking Fringe podcast, wherever you get your podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, or wherever else you go to. Uh, throw it up in our socials as well, Facebook, Instagram, at the Rucking Fringe podcast. And check it out. Thank you, Dave. Till next time, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Just-